Welcome back to Sip the Tally Films, and on today's episode, we're going to talk about Kyle Hamilton. For some reason, Kyle has been around the line of scrimmage, blitzing a lot, and playing some defensive line type gap responsibilities. Why, you ask? We're not getting the pressure that we need from the front four, so they've included Kyle in some of those simulated pressures and straight pressures just to help get an added push and, you know, attempt to get the ball out. So let's take a look at what has happened, what, what has happened in the last game versus the Steelers uh, when Kyle was around the line of scrimmage and blitzed and did some of those things. Let's take a look at the results, see if they were good or bad, and kind of rate how Kyle played in those situations. Roll the intro. So let's start with this play, and you'll see the situation, you know, on the screen before the play starts. So in this situation, it's the first quarter, 12 minutes, 36 seconds left, second and four on the Pittsburgh 43-yard line. That's Kyle's spot shot out there, and he's going to blitz from that position. What they do is Kenny Pickett does a good job of seeing it because he's the edge guy. So he's going to not hand it off and throw the bubble screen right where he left from. Now you got Brandon Stevens to try to defend that bubble from way back there. Oh, that's Chuck Clark, I'm sorry. And they just, you know, they take advantage of it. They get a about a three yard gain out of it because look at look at the way Kenny has to throw the ball. He has to kind of side on it so he doesn't get it as accurately as he would want to because Kyle's long. And even with him jumping and trying to disrupt the the throw, that helps, you know, to pursue. So, you know, even though they got the gain out of it, I appreciate this look because it gives them something different. And again, watch how Kenny has a side on it because he he don't get an accurate throw. The guy stopped. And then I think that's Brandon Stevens does a good job of coming off the block when um, the receiver cracks and makes the tackle. Let's go to the next play. Situation, um, third quarter, eight minutes and 16 seconds left, second and seven from the Pittsburgh 43. So kind of the same area of the field, just going in a different direction. You see Kyle kind of shifts to the box when his guy comes in motion. And he's going to make the guard completely whiff. The guard completely whiffed. I mean, like, tragically. He goes right between the, the guard and the center. Basically, Kyle goes in A-gap. And is right there in position to attempt to make the tackle on Najee. And they do a good job of pursuing after that. Owe, I think Owe eventually gets the, the TFL on this. But this is this play is made because of Hamilton and Matt BK, I think. Yeah. Hamilton does a good job of avoiding the, the center and the guard. And just gets in there and kind of shuts that side of the line down. Look at look at Matt BK. Just destroy the center. Then Kyle comes right there. So they kind of got a box in. Kind of got him boxed in. And even if he decides to cut this thing back to this side, you got a guy right there waiting on him also. So it's a good job of Team D right there. Good job of Kyle just avoiding and getting out and helping make a, making a play. Our next play. Situation. It's, uh, let me back up a little bit. Third quarter, 6.05 left. Second and four from the Baltimore 44. See Kyle right there on the edge. And what he's going to do, he's going to beat George Pickens inside. Now he's ready to, you know, to control that gap. He has that outside edge. And if they continue that way, he's there to make the tackle. Again, boxed in with him. And I think that's Travis Jones this time. Queen going to beat George Pickens to the inside. I think, uh, is that Travis Jones or Urban? Going to win their block. It is. It's Travis Jones. So both of them got, a, you know, got basically got him boxed in. And why can't we get D Lyman to, to play around the line of scrimmage the way Kyle is playing? Or age guys, so to speak. Why can't we get our age guys to play around the line of scrimmage with that same, not necessarily strength, but with that same awareness and agility to avoid blocks and then be in the backfield to make tackles? You don't necessarily have to make the tackle, but at least you're in the backfield and, you know, you, you put pressure on a, the, the ball carrier to, to make decisions. But again, good job by 
Queen, not Queen. Good job by Hamilton. Good job by by Travis Jones. Let's move on to the next one. Situation is third quarter still. Three minutes and 52 seconds left. Third and four from the Baltimore 32. See Hamilton on the edge again. Anytime you got in that close to the line of scrimmage, the potential for him to blitz is, is there. Even when he's off some, he still kind of walks up late in some opportunities. But again, this play I really like by Mike McDonald. This is one of the simulated pressures. You'll see the, the arrows point to where each guy's going. Kyle's coming off the edge. Uh, I think this is Houston's going to occupy the tackle. Always going to come in like he's occupying a guard and peel back out. Queen's going to occupy the center. Man, BK is going to act like he's occupying this guard and peel back out. Then you got uh, maybe Bowser up top. I think both of them got on gold shoes, so I'm getting Bowser and Houston kind of confused. But I like this simulated pressure. It, it, it confused the guards. It confused the O-line. And now Kyle's coming free. It looks like a six-man pressure, but it's only four because you got those two guys dropping out. Kyle got a free lit. And just, had he been there a hair earlier, would have been a sack. Maybe even a sack fumble. And had, Mar had Marcus had his eyes on the ball, um, he may have got a pick. May have got a pick. But Marcus was doing the right thing. When it's, when it's man, your eyes stay on your man. Don't peek in the backfield. So he did the right thing. Even though it was a tip ball, he did the right thing, did his job. But, again, I like the, the pressure to, uh, that Mike McDonald drew up in that, the simulated pressure, because it looks like six guys were coming. And they even went as far as to take a step or two, like they were going to engage in the guards, then peel out. And that allowed Kyle to come off that edge free. Our next one. Uh, fourth quarter, uh, 14 minutes, 17 seconds left. First and 10, Pittsburgh. From the Pittsburgh, 30. Kyle on that edge, covering the slot receiver. Now, I was asked this question a little while ago on Twitter. Why is Kyle playing so much, you know, slot corner? And, and the answer I gave is, or I'll elaborate on the answer, is I think Jalen Norman Davis, Pepe, they're not up to par, or they're even more, they're more comfortable with Kyle being there so they can do a lot of what we're seeing. I don't think Kyle covers better than Pepe. I think he covers better than Jay Loma Davis, but I don't think he covers better than Pepe. But you can do more things with Kyle sitting right there. You can actually ask him to cover that guy, which Sims will probably win because Kyle has problems covering Sims type of receivers. But you can blitz from this position. And you can put somebody over top of it. Or you can play zone and have him as one of them low zone, them low zone um players. It's a lot more that you can do with Kyle right there than you can with Pepe. And especially in the run game. Because Pepe at the line of scrimmage, he don't have no bricks in his pocket to come in there and kind of make tackles. But then if you want to do that, you put Marlon in the slot. Now you're looking at two unsure guys outside. Now you got a Pepe and a Brandon Stevens outside. So the choice really is only to play Kyle there and just play your big nickel package as much as you can. He's going to come off the blitz, off the edge. Beats, beats him easy. Beats the tackle easy. Watch this dip. Kyle has a dip better than some of our edge guys. Oh, wait. Just watch it. Let me see if I can slow it down just enough for you. Hmm. Like the tackle, don't touch him. Till he, he touches the four on Kyle's back. He gets just enough for Kyle to push him past, though. That's where he, got to, he has to work on cutting that edge tight. He got to work on cutting his edge real tight. See if I can kind of point that out. You got to get tighter here. Oh, it won't even work. Son of a gun. Oh, I got to do it over here. <laughs> yeah, we're going to cut his edge tighter. That's what, instead of going so deep on the outside, you got to get tighter there. So that way he'll, you don't want to rush past the quarterback. And then forces pick it out the pocket, and this guy up here just, I don't know what he was doing all game. Why he out there dancing and can't defend. He out there dancing and can't defend. Allows Pickett to get a catch. Good pressure, though. 
Let's go. Let's move on to. I think we got one more. We got one more play. It's the fourth quarter steal with two minutes and 33 seconds left. They still don't have the lead. This is the drive where I think they took the lead. See Kyle at the bottom of your screen right there. And again, on this one, he wins at the line of scrimmage, but just keep going. Watch he beat the tackle. Uh-uh. Beat the tackle and keep going. He pauses right there. For some reason, he pauses. I don't know if he's being held or what, but he'll, that allows Pickett to get outside the box. Just keep going. He had the man. All you got to do is just keep going, Kyle. Just keep going. Again, he may have been held. I can't see it from this angle. But for some reason, he just stopped. He has a free run at the QB right now. Beat, beat the tackle like most uh, edge guys does. And he probably was held. Look at the way 65 threw, it, threw his hands up. But again, using Kyle in this situation, I wish we didn't have to because we could get pressure with four. But because we can't get pressure with four, we're sending Kyle Hamilton. And he's doing a decent job in this position. But everybody else got to do their part, too, to come with him. And so I just think that – well, I'll, hold on. I'll tell you. I think that we have to use him in this situation. The the DBs behind him and Brandon Stevens are – they're not trusted by the coaches or they're not up to par as far as their play. So we just got to use Kyle in that situation. We can blitz him. He can cover tight ends decently. He um, does a good job, in, a decent job in zone. So um, hopefully when he has to cover those shiftier receivers like a Sims, like a um, Deontay, I forget his name for the Steelers, they can be in zone and he don't have to chase those guys in man. And he also had a play later in the game, but maybe in that, dri that last drive we showed where um, – I think Sims caught the ball over the middle. If he was, if, if Kenny Pickett was a hair late, that would have been a pass deflection or even an interception. That's the play I put on Twitter earlier. Uh, so Kyle's not doing a terrible job. He playing a lot better than he did versus the Dolphins. But, you know, for what we got behind him, you just got to use him in that spot. So, you know, the kid's gotten better. Is is it what we need? I think so, but everybody else has a has to raise their level of play because you're putting a lot of pressure on a rookie to produce. Even though I know he was the 14th pick, Hendo, <laughs> but saying you're still putting a lot of pressure on rookies to produce, which is what we're doing too much of. So um, that's my two cents on, you know, why Kyle Hamilton is around the line of scrimmage as much as he is, whether it be blitzing or kind of fitting in the run the run schemes or, or you know, the run gaps. So um, that's what I got for you today. And if you, you like the video, like the video. Uh, if you want to be here when more videos drop, hit the subscribe button so you can be here when they come out. I uh, appreciate everybody that came through the excuse me, the roundtable yesterday. We had a great time despite what was going on in real life. Uh, we all want to pray for, for Hamlin um, and just keep that, that young man and his family lifting their prayers, man. Keep fighting, young man. Keep fighting. And on that note, man, I'm out, man. Peace. With the